Unreasonable is the key word here. So if the FBI raided Trump's home, they would have to prove the raid was reasonable under the Constitution or by definition, it would be illegal. So let's say Trump had documents and let's say he stored them in a secure room at Mar-a-Lago, his home, well guarded, locked and such. Now, let's see if the FBI was reasonable in raiding Mar-a-Lago. One way to say if they were reasonable would be if they had done that before and or if what Trump did was unusual. The Records Act the FBI used to raid Trump was put into law after Watergate. So it's a relatively new law. Now, let's take a look at presidents and how they've handled documents since the Records Act went into effect. Some research for you, folks. Take a look right there. George Bush, 41, first one, stored documents in a bowling alley and a Chinese restaurant. Bill Clinton brought 80 million documents, 80 million pages. He stored it in an Oldsmobile dealership. And get this, in a sock drawer in his home. George Bush, 43, 68 million pages stored in a warehouse in Texas. And that line right there, he lost 22 million emails. 22 million emails lost, some of them having to do with the Iraq invasion. And Barack Obama, 30 million pages moved into an abandoned furniture store near Chicago. Wow. In summary, Trump appears to have taken much better care of the documents he had than other former presidents took for their presidential libraries, by the way. I mean, Clinton, Bush, Chinese restaurants. So FBI, why the inequitable treatment of Mr. Trump? Politics? Or are Obama and Biden behind the raid on Mar-a-Lago? Are the liberals that afraid of Trump running in 24? They need to bully the former president. I'll tell you what, though, I don't think it's going to work. Trump seems to get energized by that treatment, the unfair treatment. And I don't even think he broke any laws. But I'm no lawyer. But I did stay at a Holiday Inn last night. Good thing we do have an actual lawyer, a really good lawyer, in fact, who knows a ton about this case. Elena Habba, President Trump's attorney, and she joins us now. Elena, we did a little research. I'm, I'm blown away at some of the ways other presidents treated those millions upon millions of documents, yet they didn't get raided. Donald Trump got raided. Bias? I think so. I, I'm not sure how you could possibly show that list. And one thing that's missing on there, don't forget Hillary Clinton, but never mind her, she never was president, as we well know. But Barack Obama and his 30 million pages moved into an abandoned furniture store. That furniture store also happened to be adjacent to a McDonald's, where there was frequent people moving in and out of that parking lot. And NARA recognized that he had, and he admitted he had classified documents in there, and, uh, and they stated that was not a secure location. But he didn't get raided. Hunter Biden's not raided. So Baron Trump's room can go get raided, but not Hunter Biden. If you can look at what's happening in our country right now and tell me with a straight face that there is not a dual system of justice, I would be shocked. And you must really be committed to stupidity. It is absolutely insane what is happening. Alina, um, none of those other presidents, by the way, folks, let's, here's how it goes down. A president leaves office. Their presidential library usually comes into effect about, via donations or whatnot two, three, four years down the road. And in the meantime, the presidents take these documents and they store them in various ways. To me, to the, you know, untrained eye, a locked door in Mar-a-Lago seems a lot more secure than a Chinese restaurant in a mall, a bowling alley, an Oldsmobile dealership, or Hillary Clinton's bathroom on some server. Wait, don't forget, Mar-a-Lago and... You know, those that have been fortunate enough to visit Mar-a-Lago know that it is incre incredibly secure. There are gates. There is private security for the club itself. And then there is secret service. And the facts are very clear about one thing, and even the liberal media can't twist this. The DOJ came in in June. They said, this looks fine. Add a second lock to where the boxes were stored. They added a second lock on top of secret service. CCTV surveillance, the private club security, the fact that it's in Palm Beach County in Palm Beach, which is one of the safest places I know of. And they say that this is more dangerous and more urgent that they needed to raid than any of the other presidents who have them in their sock drawer, who are smashing their phones, you know, um, bleach pitting emails, but that's okay. But we don't see any investigations on any Democratic members. It's frightening for this country. I am sick of seeing it. And that is why I fight every day for President Trump. 
You know, I, I, I kind of ended that little monologue with, are they that afraid of Trump running that they think this will somehow <laughs> deter him? You spend a lot of time with him. I believe you were mm. maybe with him today. I got to assume... It, 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 they took a line out because I wrote it. I said it's almost like spinach to Popeye. But uh, doesn't this kind of en energize him and make him want to run even more when they treat him this way? It, it really energizes him, Eric. And I know he's a fan of your show. He told me today he'd be watching. And I have to tell you, it energizes him. I think it energizes his base. I think when people see anybody being bullied, um, which is ironic because the, the left wing um, politics and media always like to say, you know, bullying is wrong, we're pro this, we're pro that. Well, what makes it okay then to bully somebody just because they're a Republican or because they happen to be your biggest political threat? That is what is American about this country. So you're trying to now bully somebody out of running. And I have some news for you. Keep going, guys, because he does not get intimidated. Donald Trump does not get intimidated, he gets invigorated. And that is what is happening right now. You know, I, I think back to, uh, I guess, I don't know what they're doing uh, on the left in the Biden administration. Remember, it was, it was ultra MAGA, MAGA was bad, then ultra MAGA. And everyone on the right or every, every uh, America first person, the MAGA person said, hey, that's a badge of honor. It's kind of like when Hillary Clinton called anyone who supported Trump or anyone who wasn't voting for her a deplorable, boy, it failed for them and it seems to be failing yeah. for them again. Yeah. Yeah. Evidently, I'm a domestic terrorist because I voice my opinion and use my First Amendment rights. I also believe in the Fourth Amendment, which they violated, I believe, in this raid. Um, I am a, a believer in the Constitution. I believe in democracy. And that is why I live in this country and not a third world country. And if the, anybody is watching all of this and the pastor that we just spoke about the other night, you know, Eric, you always cover great topics. That was one thing that really frightened me. Again, that's a religious um attack. It has to do with his beliefs, him teaching people about his beliefs. All of these things should get people out to vote and most importantly will motivate Donald Trump. So uh, people ask me all the time, is he going to run? Is he going to save the country? And I say, you know, I can't speak to that. But what I can tell you is he is not afraid. He is a fighter. And we all need a fighter right now because we got people saying hi to Jackie who passed away last month. I mean, that's our current situation with the president, and that's that's pretty sad. Yeah. Yep. And as you point out, Trump, he pays attention, and he's watching, and he's watching Alina Habo right now. Appreciate your time as president. Hat tip to you. Go get him. Thank you, Alina. Thank you.